Yeah, so we, we want to start reading, you know, our editorials, as I've been emphasizing before, because it sort of gives us the uh, the objective of the, of the publisher as far as why they pick these particular lessons. And also, I will ask you to also uh, read the Preparing to Teach the Lesson as well. Uh, some good pointers there as far as uh, preparing ourselves to go into the lesson. So at this point, particular time. Also, uh, as I indicated on last week, I do want to start using uh, some of these tools uh, during our session, so it will it will help all of us uh, better prepare ourselves uh, when we, uh, especially for like a lesson like this. But unfortunately, I did not advise Minister Burnett of that, so uh, we will not do that tonight. But next week, we will be uh, doing what we did on last week, pulling up ESORT, going to the Blue Letter Bible, uh, and doing some other things so that we can uh, take advantage of all these tools. And it's especially important for these kind of lessons because they are terms that, that we're used to hearing, but they may not mean what we may think they mean. So uh, having said that, uh, we're gonna turn it over to Minister Burnett and uh, we will go from there. Well, all right. All right, now we're all in this together now, so don't leave me out there hanging. All right, we got you. Uh, in this unit one, we're talking about Jesus is God. So that's our focus. Right. In these particular ver uh, passages from March 3 to the 31st is confirmed by power over death. Okay. And so when I first looked at this lesson, I was a little, I I'm gonna say confused because I don't know, have any other uh, word to describe it, uh, why we started at 38. But then as I read, I see the focus was a little different. But I won't say a little different. The focus was very different. Yes, Ron. Um, should someone, since uh, Sister Brain doesn't have a book, read the Read aims? the aims, yes. Okay, I can do it. All right. Today's aim, facts, to see how Jesus is glorified through the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Principle, to understand that the glory of God is central in every aspect of life, even in the most difficult trials. Application, to trust God is working in every situation for his glory and our good. And I was going to uh, do that after I gave. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, just how I, uh, when I first looked at the lesson, how my first impression of it was. Um, it was um, somewhat different than. Can I, uh, can I, can I, can I can one second, Minister Minute? Sister Vrame, you know, you, you have the scripture, right? It's chapter 11, verses 38 through 40. 40 I do. Uh, okay. 44. Okay. Thank you. Next time this happens, just give me a give me a, a, a email and I'll I'll make copies for you. Uh, better text me now. Email him. <laughs> Thank you. We we know to text you, Faye. <laughs> we all know. <laughs> hey Willa, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. All right. Any other um, uh, inserts, announcements, or no, no, no? Um, I'm sorry. That was pretty much. I admit to tell you. It, unless you, unless I'm jumping ahead of you, uh, Minister Cobb mentioned it, but I was really taken with that opening paragraph right above the aims in under preparing to teach the lesson. As was I. I mean, I really looked at that as. Yeah. Almost like a closing summary yeah. or encapsulation for our students. Yeah. I, you I, guys I, are really ready to get into the lesson, I see. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's like, Let's do it. <laughs> do it. Okay. So let's, let's start with this since you brought that up. Okay. I continue on. Very quickly. Uh, and this is basically, at this point, for Melissa's benefit. 
Uh, it is always helpful to intently read all the background verses before studying and teaching the scripture lesson. In this case, we learned that the Lord Jesus had a deep personal interest in and affection for the three siblings in the story. Yet in his own assessment of the situation, Lazarus' death was intended to glorify God. Do the best you can to help your students see that life's circumstances are rarely what they seem to be, and that God can be glorified out of even the most dire events. While it is often hard to discern this in our own personal stories, it is clearly stated here that the story of Lazarus and his two sisters was recorded to show us this truth. Absolutely. And that goes along with the application. Amen. Okay. That goes along with the application. And, uh, and if we read uh, the uh, uh, entire chapter the from chapter uh, verse 1 of chapter 11 up to and through the scriptures you would see you could see that very clear yes. that even though he had a deep love for the three of them it wasn't about them right per se okay in, in the beginning uh, uh their faith was being uh, put up front, uh, but his was more of a, what he was doing, and he being uh, Jesus was reaffirming their faith because of the relationship that they had. Okay. And so uh, we all uh, should uh, have read those verses uh, before coming to verse 38. I would also suggest that if you look at previous chapters, the same thought is in those as well. When you look at chapter nine, when he talks about the blind man, mm -hmm. it's all about the glory of God. Amen. When you talk about chapter 10, the good shepherd, again, it's also all about glorifying God. At verse 11, chapter 11 does the same thing, okay? Um, and so I when he comes to the sisters, and, and we're talking again about background, uh, he in verse 4, it sticks out and is referenced that verse several times to the lesson, and that uh, when Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, uh, He's told them that this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. And that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Mm -hmm. And so when we start talking about our own personal situation, uh, while it's easy to get caught up in those situations, um, the things that are happening, you know, are not... Uh, um, uh, about us, we're not the, the the subject of what's taking place. Hmm. 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 And so we always have to keep that in mind. Uh, one of the things that I, I was taught uh, the late Pastor Francis, Thank when you. he would ask and say, "What is the what is the Lord teaching you in this situation? What is it you?" He wants you to learn, okay. and 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 that's a uh, I say I think is a tough question because it really stops it makes you stop and think about what's going on, okay, and reminding you this, of the sovereignty of God. And I also saw something else too, uh, Marcus. It's about his people's faith as well. I'm sorry? It's about strengthening and growing the people's faith, both the family and the disciples. And so when I look at 11 verse 15, I've never noticed, well, we noticed before, but we never thought much about it. When he actually says, he said, he said to the disciples, I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent you may believe. Hmm. Absolutely. And, then, and that's always the, the second part of the lesson that that we're to learn out of this. Okay. When I say second part, 
One is to glorify God, and the other is to strengthen us. Yeah, the secondary part, yes. And, I, and I could yeah, is a step. But to actually yeah. say he was glad, can you imagine? He says, I'm glad you lose your business. <laughs> I'm glad you lose so-and-so, you know, so this can be done. Can we actually say, Lord, I'm glad you, you know, this happened in my life so that I may know you better. And he, he also says something similar to that in these verses that we go over. Okay. You know, I say this prayer, okay, not because I don't know, you know, what to ask for or what you're going to do, but I'm saying it's for the crowd. So that they may believe. Any any other in, in, uh, interjections? I don't know. I just got I got the book on Sunday, and I was just uh, kind of off the record. I even like the cover of the book. I just missed my book. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So when we got three outlines here, our, our three part outline, the grave approach, the prayer offered, and the dead called forth. Mm -hmm. right. And even the introduction to the lesson points these things out that we've been talking about. Right. And and I, I like when the way he ends it, he says. Um, that it also shows that he goes with us through the suffering. Jesus' ministry also reveals that he cared for people in their times of deepest need. Okay. And so we got to always remember that, that his love is, is, is over us, but his mission is to do what? Save us. Bring glory to God. And to perfect our faith, grow our faith, strengthen our faith. Okay. And that's why and, 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 and through his through his word, through his signs, through his spirit, is to strengthen our faith, perfect our complete our faith. Verse the second paragraph tells you through some of the different avenues as well. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, so you can get that part about the automobile accident. I'm still trying to figure out why we had ours. That I'm still suffering from <laughs> 2005. <laughs> well, um, look at you today. I'm still suffering through 2005. <laughs> That's my point. Yeah, but but you but but you're here. <laughs> most definitely. I mean, some of us, uh, probably most of us, got some sort of suffering that we're going through. Yeah. Okay. If, if it's not personal, it's with the loved one. Amen. But some of us got some sort of trial that we're going through. Mm -hmm. right? Some of us have more than one. Okay. Right? <laughs> um, but the, the 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 thing that we need to carry with us is uh, like he said, uh, the Lord is is going to be with us. And I, I once again point out Philippians 1, 29 and 30. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Right, especially yeah, one twenty nine, definitely. Yeah, you so probably should we, read that because many may not know what you're talking about. All right, turn to Philippians one twenty nine. Once you see it, I know you it'll be familiar because we've uh, said it uh, uh, several times. Yeah. So 429, 129 says, For to you it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. And so this notion that once we're saved, we <laughs> should we we would never have any difficulties in life. Well, um, that's even more than a myth. Well, That's a downright lie. Yeah. And First Peter 2, 20, 21, that's also 
especially 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we have to remember we're still in the, the presence of sin, you know, and wrestling with the power of sin. Like you said, Philippians 129. Philippians 129. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. We ready for 38? Yep. Jesus, therefore, again, being deeply moved within, <clears throat> came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a stone was lying against it. I, I believe that that deeply moved goes back to, was it uh, verse uh, 35 where Jesus wept? 35. Okay. He was, he was, he was moved. Uh, uh, it was, it, 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 it's not so much, his movement wasn't because of, of their lack of faith, excuse me. <clears throat> but it was more so uh, how we were, they were being affected. We also indirectly being affected by sin the havoc that Satan was causing on 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 the world. See, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. But that last part where it says Satan, I don't think that that was. I I, th I think that that this is actually showing us the true humanity of Christ, and I know that the Greek word has to do with anger. I understand that, but but here we're talking about the love of our Lord towards uh, one of I mean a very very close family, uh, and and the same way that that when we go to a funeral of a close loved one. We, we can't help but show share in their sorrow and and well, that's I think what, it's both. well i i don't i don't think this had any, anything to do with with his and i and i know that i've read all the commentaries and they, and they most of them say that but they are but the other ones uh i i tend to go with the other ones who 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 uh who is bringing out the reality that 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 this is that this is a a a a manifestation of one, the humanity of Christ, how he truly was all man, uh, how he was indeed affected, uh, you know, by, you know, by the, 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 the pains that we go through, especially at the loss of a loved one, as these two sisters, I had lost, you know, their brother and, you know, and this was also his very good friend as well. Um, and, and I think that, 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 uh, the idea that one of the reasons was that he was angry because of of what uh, sin had brought onto the world, uh, and of course, this is just my interpretation. I could be wrong, but I don't think that I, I don't I don't think that the idea that this was uh, that the idea about Satan uh, and the the havoc that sin has brought onto the world uh, had anything to do with this particular situation. Um, and again, I would, you know, we, we can discuss it, but I don't, uh, and again, like I said before, I, I understand the meaning of the Greek word, but the, the meaning of the Greek word also has to do with, with, uh, with, with deep, Emotion. with deep emotions as well. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, I, I, I don't agree that I, I agree that there's like deep emotions. Um, but I think not only his humanity, but all his, also his deity as well, as far as his overall mission. Again, that was that was uh you know that that's that's my understanding. I don't I don't think that sin has anything to do with this. But anyway, uh anybody else? <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, uh and that's what I was trying to say from the beginning, um, Minister Cobb, you guys. Every time I read this passage, I think about what was Jesus trying to get the people to do. And he's trying to get them to believe. And, and when you think about the deep emotion, because see, when you look at it, I'm, I'm just gonna tell you how I feel. When you look at it, Jesus already knew that Lazarus was going to die. He could have stopped him at any time. Absolutely. So, and, and what I'm looking at is the fact that 
he was so hurt by people's unbelief because he kept teaching them about unbelief. And, and then before he even got there, he did he meet Mary and Martha who still had doubts. And then he get to the grave. We got people who had doubts. And, and the Bible said that he moaned in his spirit. And so I be, now I believe this is about people's unbelief. That's what the pain was because folks didn't believe. I, I would, I would, that, I would go ahead. That was, that was nothing new to Jesus. He could have stopped Lazarus any time from dying. Yeah, he didn't even have to be there to stop it. That's I mean, right. He could have just spoken and Lazarus would have been a heel. Well, yeah, right. and, and, but, but I don't, but I don't think he was uh, concerned with Mary and Martha's unbelief as much as he was with the people, the crowd that had gathered that came to to mourn with Martha and Mary, and that followed her to the gravesite. And that's the point and, and of verse thirty-three. At... Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's the point of verse thirty-three. Yeah, so Sister Pipes so, is saying. Well, you know, one of the things that came to my mind on my site was the, the difference in the relationship. And I hadn't seen this before. The, the centurion came to Jesus to heal his servant. Right, right. Jairus... <clears throat> came to Jesus to heal or raise his daughter. But I saw so much love between Jesus and this family of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They sent a message to Jesus, but the message was simply, the one you love is sick, which told me they only they felt they only had to say that and Jesus would know what to do. They didn't have to be specific, like right. the centurion and Jairus. Right. This relationship was so loving and so close, they simply had to send a message saying, Jesus, the one you love is sick. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the same kind of message we give one another? Yeah. The one you love is sick. And then our response is, what can I do? What do right. they need? Do I, can they take visitors? Do I need to go? Do I need to drop off food? And that just pointed out to me how strong this loving relationship was with Jesus and that family. Exactly. And the relationship is strong, but what would what does Jesus, and Marcus thought, uh, when he started off, he was talking about what was Jesus' purpose? And that's to glorify God. The relationship is strong, but what, what, what would Jesus really want us to do is to believe that he is who he says he is. And guess what? When we believe like that, that's going to bring on strong relationships anyway. Right. And I think that points to their belief. If they simply said, yeah. the one you love is it. They didn't ask, come heal him. They didn't ask, raise him from the dead. That's they right. Said, the one you love is sick. We know whatever needs to be done, you can do it. And you remember, he kept telling, he kept telling Man. Martha. Now, remember, he kept telling, telling them. Now, Martha, what Martha? I think that was Martha that came. He said, "Now, if if you had not, if you had been here, he would not die." Then he said, "Now, what?" In other words, he had a conversation somewhere with her. He said, "If I told you, if you only believe." Mm -hmm. And then her sister came to say, he told her the same thing. And before he got to this point, he told it. He told the disciples that he said Lazarus sleep, but they didn't understand that Lazarus had died. They said, "Well, he sleep, he should be okay." But he was doing that to let Lazarus die because he wanted them to to know how to believe in him. Because he could have just told Lazarus, he could have spoke the word, and Lazarus would have woke up. That was it. But he was seeking. He wanted them to know and believe that he is who he says he is. And then he gets to the grave, and then these people at the grave don't believe. And then, and then the Bible tells us twice he moaned in the spirit. Willa, you're going to add? 
Uh, no, I want to know where we are. And we on verse one? 38. Verse 38. But we've gone back to Martha and Mary. Okay. And verse 30, th verse 30 and forward is dealing with the crowd's unbelief. There, well, that's the what 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 uh, Pat is saying is absolutely correct for the for the crowd. He is really focusing on the crowd in the verses that we're going through. Okay, I heard yes. I heard no. Are we on verse thirty eight? Yes or no? Yes, no, verse thirty eight. We just did some background leading up to yes. It. Okay, so uh, were we talking about the word in specific groaning? Were we just talking about that? Yes. 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 Okay. Minister Cobb said that he was not the commentators. They all saying that he was angry, but you're saying that he wasn't, right? No. That's what you said. No. 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 He wasn't angry. That's what I I'm saying. I'm, I didn't say that. No, I'm, I'm saying. <laughs> I, I listen. Watch other commentators say that he was not angry. No, no. When you look at the when you look at the Greek word for this for this word groaning. I did. I did. Okay, so it has like two different meanings. In other words, one one meaning mean that is has has a, a meaning of of, of anguish, uh, I, I guess a certain thing. And in, in this case, um, many commentators say that it was his anger against sin. But then the other meaning is a is 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 a meaning that means uh, a, an expression of strong emotions. Uh, and and based upon, in other words. As, as I as I try to 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 explain to everyone uh, every Wednesday, is that you have to always stay in the context. You have to always use uh, not just commentators. You you have to go to to uh, to tools that will take you back to the original language and and look at various contexts, and then you can get a better idea as far as you know as far as what the word actually means in this particular context. And, and I think that Ron kind of brought this out is that and and Sister Pipes as well. This is about relationship. So th this was yes, we understand that that you know that that physical death is the result of of sin. We understand that, but but this is a situation here that's involving a strong relationship between a family and Jesus Christ. Okay, so so just as they had sorrow, obviously he would share the same sorrow, but at the same time he would also look at at, at uh, uh, and according to verse thirty three. He looked at how the crowd was responding, and that's really was the was the reason for him weeping because of of the crowd unbelief. So, so again, it, it was not so much he was angry at sin and 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 what sin has caused and brought upon humanity. This was all about literally it was about two things: one, the people's faith. Not and again, I, I want to emphasize it was not about Mary and Martha's faith because their faith was strong, and you know it was strong because. When Jesus told told uh, told them that he was going to raise up La he was that Lazarus was, was going to be raised by him, you, you know Martha went right away to the Old Testament because she understood that Jesus would indeed raise he he would raise us up at the last day. So again, she understood that, but she did not understand that he was going to do it right now. So it's, it was about faith, strengthening the, the faith of the people who didn't know who, who who didn't have this kind of relationship with Jesus, and to give faith to some because some yeah I think so. The only aspect, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Faith. And yeah. also to give faith because there are some that also believe because of what happened. Exactly. Yeah, and I think in verse verse 25, Jesus is pointing out to to Martha the the uh, uh, additional information to help with her uh, uh, strengthen her understanding of that Old Testament uh, right, resurrection. Right. 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 Okay, because he said, tells her that I am the resurrection and the life, and the one who believes in me will live even if he dies. So again, he is again reinforcing her faith, but her faith is intact. Yeah. And let, let us not forget when it comes to Martha's faith, after she said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Right on the heels of that, she had a butt. Yes. But I know mm -hmm. that yes. even yes. now, after even the fact, now, yes. whatever you ask of God, he's going to give it to you. Yeah. Yes. And she also says in verse 27, yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, 
Yes, yes. The Son of God yeah. and he who comes into the world. And so when we get to verse 38, his direction now changes from Martha and Mary to the bystanders. Amen. Okay. He is focused strictly on the bystanders. Right. So that answers your question, Sister Willa. Oh, but we can move on. Well, no, we don't want to leave a question unanswered. Yeah. No, because I, the, that word groaning, when I looked it up, I got multiple things coming from that. I even downloaded the eSword and looked at it. And, and I'm thinking, so what was he doing at this moment? What, what kind of emotions? Emotions, mm -hmm. like our human emotions. Yeah, because yeah. It, it was in his, his human his humanity. Yeah, yeah and, and that's what I was trying to emphasize is that you see Jesus in 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 one of the one of the rarest times where you see truly his humanity coming out. So there can be no doubt in anybody's mind at this moment that Jesus was not completely or totally an absolute human. Jesus wept. No, Jesus no wept. fear over death. No fear over death. Why would he? Yeah. No fear over death. No. Why would he? Well, emotions. But he wouldn't have any fear over death. He's what, trying he to get us not to have any fear over death. Well, well, again, I, I think it goes back to his emotions being displayed. In other words, the fact that he that the fact that he is human. He can be affected and impacted by those things which affect all of us who are human. So one person says, so deeply did Jesus enter into men's sorrows that his heart was wrong with anguish. Uh, to, Will, to Willa's question, if I may, Willa, I think because the same word, Greek word is used in verse 33 as 33, in 38. Yes. And I think if we look at 33 to John's point, that kind of puts this in a better context. Yeah, exactly. Because in verse 33, it says, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping mm -hmm. and the Jews also weeping who came with her, uh -huh. he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. That's showing the, the humanity and identifying with us in our times, whether they be joyful hmm. or miserable. Right, right, right. That, that's a good point, Ron. Yeah, it is. Verse 30, 33. Because mm -hmm. he that says, yeah, yeah, he was, he seen everybody was weeping. The sorrow was was uh, all, all across the board. So the and how many times everything. have we identified with others yeah. and we mourn or weep when they do? Yeah. Not because anything happened to us particularly, because we feel for those we love and we share in their sorrow right we rejoice when they rejoice we mourn and grieve when they mourn and grieve how many times have you started laughing because somebody some other people laugh you don't even know what they're laughing about but it's right. in fact, you start laughing yeah. so so what jesus showed is that god who cares yes right exactly yes. so yeah showed i think us that showed us that what that they, we have a God who cares. God who cares, yeah. Thank you, Lord. So, yeah, right. I think, Willa, for your point, verse 33, the word there helps better put in context 38. Exactly. Yes, it does. And, 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 and yeah. again, we, we want to emphasize that these are important questions because students w may ask you these questions. So uh, it, it's best that we, that we hash these out during these sessions so that at least we have a better understanding uh, about what is going on, you know, in the uh, in this particular account. That's why we're and, here. And I, th That's I why think that here, goes right? that goes back to you, your point about context. Yeah, because even though it seems like we're bouncing back and forth, we have to thoroughly understand eleven through thirty-five in order to get the full picture of 38 to 44. Exactly. Amen. Okay, we can go on now, I guess, then. Does that help you, Willa? 
It does. Thank you. Okay. Thank no, thank you. <laughs> Are we ready okay. for 39, uh, Minister Burnett? I think so. Okay. Uh And so uh, again, now now he he tells them to remove the stone, and then you can see how Martha Martha wavered because you know uh -huh. this, I'm sorry. I said uh huh. Yeah, because uh, she knows uh, that he's been in the grave long enough for uh, decomposition to take place. And typically, I will say typically, in, in, in past situations, Jesus raised folks, they weren't hadn't been dead this long. That's true. But even more so, even more so, and this is where background comes in, and I think Ryan probably already done this, uh, is that Jesus, uh, the Jews have a tradition. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. And that tradition is that after three days. Three days. Right, the soul can't come back into the body. Yeah, so, just hovers for three days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly right. And 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 notice now how Jesus intentionally waited. Yes, he did. Until, he has a way of making this point. Exactly. And going back to what Willa was saying earlier about addressing these non-believers. Right, right. Right. What you were saying earlier, Willie, he, he could have he could have spoken a word, or I think maybe it was Sister Pipes. He could have spoken Pipes, a yeah. word. He could have healed him. Uh, he could have brought him from the dead from wherever he was right away. Wow. wow. But that would not have had the impact on the glory of the Father. And which I think that is key. Which Martha had addressed in saying, I know now, even though he's dead. Whatever you ask of God, He's gonna He's gonna grant it to you. Now you go there after the Jewish belief of these unbelievers, but their Jewish belief and tradition says, "Ain't no way the soul's gone. It's been four days." Yeah, I think I think that those two aspects uh, is important. Uh, you know, the uh, fact that um, the crowd has seen previous signs of uh, miracles uh, just, uh, and even him raising them from the dead, but not four days. Right. right. And it addresses that Jewish custom that it, it's impossible to do it after three days. So he showed the yeah, certainty but, of his death, period. Right, right. Yeah. And going back to what Sister Pipes was alluding to, this will most certainly strengthen their faith. Yes. Oh, I mean the the crowd's faith. Yeah. But definitely, it would definitely move them to to uh, 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 to to believe. At and, least some of them. And this belief about uh, the soul hovering for three days it was not only a common belief, but it was also written in the Talmud. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Now, now remember, now Ron just brought up brought up a word. Talmud. As teachers, you all need to know what that word means. So, um, that is, I know that's the Old Testament writing. I forgot which one it was. Well, is it's, well, what kind of writing is it though? You remember? Is it the law? The Jewish law and tradition. It's yeah. It's, it's more traditional. Tradition. Okay. Okay. The, the, so they the, would have known that. Well, yeah, every every Jew would have. This yeah, is, they would have known that. Yeah, most certainly. They would have been. They would have been taught that anyway. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, whether whether they remembered it at that time, right? Uh, that, right. That's another conversation. But they and, would and, have been and again, now, we want to, we want to emphasize that this was not this was not on equal level with the with the law. This right. was more or less oral traditions. It, it, I, I think more accurately, it was tradition and some rabbi's interpretation. Yeah, exactly, of exactly. Yes. exactly. And there lies yeah. the problem, you see. Okay. So it wasn't real? 
No, no, it actually, it, no, it, it was a, it was a real literature. I mean, it was, it was, I mean, it was real. Of course, it was real. But no different than some others, they would take the law and kind, in some instances, misinterpret it. Exactly. Because you have to remember, these would have been the scribes and the Pharisees, the educated, giving this information to the lesser learned, for right. lack of a better term. That's a good term. <laughs> <Let's alert it. laughs> because they can get away with it okay all right i just wanted to make sure that when we uh uh mention certain terms that we know what they are so that we can at the same time help our students understand those as well well i'm sorry to bring up the talmud without explanation but... well that's okay that's why we're here brother and, and i think once again you'll see uh phrases or words being used in these verses that we're going through that were also used in the, the uh, earlier verses. Uh, the dead four days is also a repeat from what, what's in verse 17. Amen. We rocking and rolling. Rocking and rolling. Right. So are we ready for 40? Well, I, I think that uh, we... When when um, when Martha says that he stinketh, uh, I I think we see again her 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 care for uh, and concern for her 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 Lord and Savior. Yes. That she did not want him to be. In other words, you could I mean you could imagine that when you open that the tomb, how the you know smell the out. smell. So she was more concerned about you know his discomfort perhaps. That's what I'm thinking. I don't think that, uh, in other words, uh, she, she was not basing, basing that statement on what she knew, but she, she was more or less basing, basing upon the fact, or the assumption, I should say, that because it's been four days and, and it's very, very, very hot around there, obviously yeah. his, his, uh, his body is going to be stinking. And she did not want her, you know, her, her, her master uh, to have to deal with that. Really? Well, I think it's not only your master, but everybody else. Yeah, because... Um... Uh, could I ask a question of both ministers? Okay. Might not get an answer, but you can ask it. <laughs> well, I'll, I, I know I'll get an answer, but I'll pay you for a correct one. <laughs> Go That's ahead funny. then. Ask um, the question. <laughs> do, do we want to say anything about Jesus asking them to move the stone? I think we should. But it certainly wasn't necessary for him to bring Lazarus back. Right. It, it, and 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 that's a that's an excellent question, and I'm I'm sure that somebody's going to ask that question. Exactly. That's why I'm bringing it up. Okay, so well, we're going state, to... state the question again. Why? Somebody would ask why he needed to remove the stone. No, yeah, why he asked somebody else? Yeah, ask somebody else. The the, okay, if the stone had to be removed, he could have done it himself. Sure. Yeah, he could have just spoke a word. Yeah. Yeah. Face that work. Right. Go go ahead, Will. I'm, I'm waiting, no, you want to you want to you want to take it, Marcus? You want me to just go ahead? No, I'm 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 pondering the question. Okay, okay. So, so 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 remember now that these that there were a lot of people who didn't believe in in in, in Jesus as being the Messiah, let alone the Son of God. Right. So right. the reason why he would have other people do that, and and, and let me give you a good old uh, let me give you a good Old Testament example, when Elijah had the confrontation between the priest of Baal. He told the people around them to put the, you know, to put the wood and put the water around yeah. so that there would be no doubt in anybody's mind. There was no trickery going on. You know, there was nothing, uh, you know, Jesus didn't come ahead before time and make all these arrangements. Uh, but, so by staying aside and having other people do it, it would further clarify and amplify uh, the fact, and authenticate that, mm -hmm. that, that, okay, we, we, okay we, we, we know that he wasn't involved in, uh, in an intimate sense because he had other people roll the stone away and what have you, uh, you know, uh, take the grave cloth, the grave clothes off of him, and all those kind of things. So, so my understanding is is that that's why he asked other people to do it, so that that would that would even more so authenticate and add to the reality of who he is. 
All right. Because they would touch and handle that body. When he said loose him. Yeah, right. They would have to touch him and take off the um, grave clothes. Because he was bound up. And, 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 and his face said, you know, he would also be defiled if he touched the dead body. Again, this is this is uh and the Jews are anybody else would have. <laughs> so if he could touch <laughs> and and also going back to this key word that keeps coming up over and over, faith. Faith, right. Yeah. So now here here he's asking the mourners, those who are weeping with Mary and Martha. Okay. to roll away the stone. Now, Martha's already said he stinks. It's been four days already. We already talked about people believing that the soul would hover around for three days. All of this is adding up to their faith. And then he says, okay, regardless, roll away the stone, you mourners. Right. Okay. Now, he could have he done it all himself and put on a great big show, but that's not what it's about. And I know Pat Pipes would be the first one to say that. <laughs> exactly. But that's a critical statement. But that's I didn't a critical see that statement. that way. Thanks. Yeah. Because I looked at it as the other healing, and he had them pick up their bed and walk. You know, so he had them uh, be involved in the process as well. And so this is another way for them to be a par part of the healing. And so it adds to their testimony. What is faith without works? Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, his very first miracle. That's the point I'm, that's the point I'm trying to right. make. His very first miracle, he had the people do something. Right. They did everything. All he did was speak. <laughs> right. Okay, I, I just wanted to bring that up because... I had a feeling some people might, some students might ask, well, he's getting ready to raise the man from the dead. Why does he need somebody to move the stone? Work. And, and understand now, he didn't need him. No, no. But yeah. that's the way the question would probably. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> but again, you know, when you go back to his, uh, uh, who he is, authenticating who he is. You know, uh, he, he he did things intentionally. Okay, I just I just okay. wanted to bring that up. I didn't mean to hold us up, but I thought we needed to address no, that, that. That's an important question, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I never I wouldn't have thought of that. All right, first forty. Are we ready for forty? Yes, sir. Okay. Jesus said to her. Talking to Martha, did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Hmm. That's pretty straight to the point. Yeah. Straight to the point. So the fact that you not only see um, that he and his father is one, but he would see God working through him in order to raise Lazarus from the dead. It's quiet. Nobody have anything to say? Well, I've been saying too much, so I'm going to shut up. Okay. Right? Do we need to talk about the glory of God? Go ahead. No. Yeah. Say something. Uh, I mean, he didn't literally say those words, but there was a scope of what he said. In John 11, 23 to 25. And, or, and 26. Yeah. Start there from the beginning, would you please? I'm sorry? Start what you said from the I beginning. I mean, what he just said, it, 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 it hadn't said in the complete words all together but there was a scope of all that he, that he uh, told her about his life giving power which is John 11 23 25 26 yeah yeah and yeah he said it says that it shows verses 23 through 31 
kind of uh, 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 emphasizes that phrase. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I thought you was going to explain what the glory of God is. I asked the question and nobody answered. Why okay. Did you <laughs> I yeah, thought you was just... question either. I said, I said, do we need to talk about the glory of God? And right. everybody was quiet. You oh, did say that. No, I was talking about said I not unto thee. That's what I was making a reference to. We're in 40, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah but, I, but I think the question about the glory of God need to be at least looked at. Yes. In, in yeah. other words, what what is it? Uh, and, and, you know, you know what? So so uh, again, uh, Sister Willow is the one who is who's asking the probing question. She's the detective in the bunch. But that is definitely a a and uh, added add to that she was she's a spokesman too. So she's got like dual duties here. <laughs> so that's the question. I mean, we need to ask that question answer that question. What is the glory of God? What what does that term glory even mean? It has a little, something to do with honor, right? Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. As uh, I'm trying to get the group to talk. Isn't it his power? Mm -hmm. The power, yes, that's one thing. Yeah, it has something to do with power. So, if, if are we talking about as for Jesus concerned of, of, of what are we talking about? We're the talking about the glory of God. Yes, yeah, because you know Jesus he talked about glorified father. That means please to please him. The things he does pleases his father. That's what he wants to do. And the things we, we do should also please him. But he's saying he's telling them that if they believe, they will see the glory of God. So in action, they'll, they'll see that God does what he, he said he's going to do. Because they're going to see the dead, the dead rise and, and, and get the belief itself. It's the glory of God. To believe, to be able to believe. So it's those things that God show us who are his children that other people can't comprehend. So it will be the, gl the glory of his power manifested through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, page, page 35, right hand side, that first paragraph, that manifestation of God's glory would come through Jesus' power to raise Lazarus from the dead, but only by faith would Martha be able to see that glory. Mm -hmm. This is still the key for us to see God's glory manifested in our midst. His power is always more than sufficient, but too often our lack of faith keep us from seeing it displayed. Yeah. And 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 that takes us to the um, uh, illustration of the lesson. <clears throat> oh. Amen. Yeah. Always. Because his God's uh, manifestation to Jesus should also be his manifestation through us. Thank you, Lord. And mm -hmm. and when we were saved, did we not see God's glory all around us that we never saw before? We should have. And we still do. That's my point. Good point, Ron. Yeah, and, and I think that, that we could really sum up the, the idea about God's glory is, is we, we need to ask two questions, really. One question is, 
Why did Jesus, what, besides saving us from our sins, what was the other reason why Jesus came as a human? Because why? Because there are things, there are certain attributes, there are certain characteristics that characterize who God is. And the only way that we can give him praise and honor is, is since he's invisible and we can't see him, is that somehow those attributes, his love, his compassion, his mercy, his graces, the only way that we can see, because when you think about glory, you're talking about what a person really is. Okay, so in order for us to praise, in order for us to be able to praise and worship and, uh, and give honor to God, most certainly we must be able to understand as much as we humanly, as much as humanly possible, who, who he is. And, and that's why Christ came. Christ came to show us the power of God, the love of God, the compassion of God, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, as, we, and, and as those various attributes are manifested, do we not glory? I mean, do we not worship God? Do we not praise God and give God all the honor, honor as, as, as his honor is displayed? Is that not what the Hebrew writer is saying in Le uh, verse 1, exactly. chapter 1, verse 3? Exactly right. Hebrews 1, 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, the upholding all things by the word of his power. Exactly right. Oh. So how much So how much will you praise God now after you see him raise up a dead man who's been dead for four days? Hmm. That's yeah. going to, in, in other words, you can't help now but seeing that kind of power displayed combined now with the compassion that Jesus has already shown towards not only to, towards his sisters, but also towards the crowd. And, and that's and just the, his glory. And just to echo what you're saying, it shows up in chapter 12 because now they're plotting to get rid of Lazarus yeah. because of what Jesus did. Exactly. Yeah. Because of the impact that what he did had on the people they are plotting to get rid, rid of Lazarus again. Exactly right. Exactly right. And based on what John was saying about the four-day time frame, there had to be a certain degree of faith just to go ahead and move the stone. <laughs> exactly. Now, that faith can grow because we've seen that the centurion, Jesus himself, said, greater faith have I not right, seen right. in Israel. Right. Right. But he also told the disciples who awakened him from his nap on the boat in the storm. Right. Mm -hmm. He of little faith. So we know there are degrees of faith. So they had to have some oh, degree certainly. of faith oh, to say after she had told everybody he stinks now. They all know it's been four days. So in their minds, the soul is gone. Without a certain degree of faith, they they probably just shrug their shoulders and walk away. I ain't moving no stone. That boy gone. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, he's already gone. You're, you're, you're absolutely right, Ron. And we can see that in his conversation with Martha and uh, during that time, because him telling her that he was the resurrection. So yes. not only can it grow, your our faith will grow yes. because the 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 situations, the circumstances we encounter will cause our faith to grow. Thank you, Lord. Absolutely. Yeah, and- Very and, good and, point. And, and to that end, we also need to emphasize perhaps uh, to our students that that there is the gift of faith, meaning that, that God literally gives certain Christians that particular gift. So when everything seems to be falling apart, that okay. particular Christian, in other words, who have the gift of faith, that's stronger than, than, than the rest of us, that particular Christian now will in essence be the manifestation again uh, of God's glory as well, because they will, they will be the ones now that will, that will encourage us to hang in there. All right. Because they have, yeah, yeah. Because they have that gift. And, and, that's, and, and I think a lot of times as Christians, we don't, we don't either remember that or we don't understand that, that God literally give people certain gifts. And one of those gifts is the gift of faith. For, for example, that there, there there is the gift of giving. So 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 again, you know we and and the, and the reason why I want to say it is, 
is that this become an encouragement now for those Christians who sometimes say, oh man, I wish I had your faith. Well, the reason why you, you, you probably don't have that person's faith is because God has given that person the gift of faith, which wow. means that you would never ever come to that level. But by, mm-hmm. but by being around those kinds of people, they are, their actions will do what? It will, it will in essence strengthen our faith. So I, so I think that that's one thing we need to also point out as well as it relates to uh, as it relates to the to the to faith and to and, and to the distinguishing between uh, 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 faith and and the gift of faith. I, I think you you had pointed out several years ago the gift of faith that you're talking about is like the measure of faith. So when we look at people like Paul, they have a, a measure of faith beyond ours. Exactly right. Because of what they've been called to do. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly right. You know, I, wow. and, and I think that we all can attest to the fact that Paul definitely had that gift. Right. <laughs> what that yeah. brother went to. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to so bring not up. only faith uh, can grow, it will grow based on the trials that you've gone through. That's for sure. Exactly. And I was just. And Marcus, I was just thinking about that. Could that be how some people have more faith than others because of what they done went through and and their ability, uh, not their ability, but God's ability allow them to accept the things that he have, you know, given them, like be, to be more obedient to God, you know, Absolutely. and the more, more, you know what I'm saying? And, and like yeah. somebody said, faith grows, you know, and I'm, I'm, I thank God I, I, that, we don't stay in the same place that God takes us to different levels of faith, you know, and I'm, 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 I'm so grateful that we're not stagnant in faith because when we get stagnant in faith, we can't move like Minister Cobb say, we're going to need somebody else to come in and teach us what faith is. But I, yeah, I love yeah. it that Outlet. I love it that God helps us to grow. The more we trust it, the more we believe, we believe it, the more we see what he does, the more our faith grows. And sometimes it takes trials and difficulties and tragedies yes. for that faith to be exactly. and grow. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I believe that his disciples didn't mind dying. Because they, they have they had went to a level where they didn't mind dying because they already knew what time it was. Help us, God. Help us. Yeah. That's what reminds me when they talk about faith the size of a mustard seed. Huh. Because depending on your trials. In circumstances and situations, that mustard seed is going to grow and continue to grow. Yes, 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 yes. And depend on what the calling is on your life will mm. determine how how much it grows. <laughs> so, are we ready for forty one? No, we're not. Oh. Okay. Forty-one, yeah, we're we're ready for forty-one. I thought we were. I was, I, I was getting ready to say, I thought we were exhausted. Forty. I thought we were on forty-one. I'm my bad. You know what? You're I, you're absolutely right. We were on forty-one. We have a question That's on the floor. We have a we have a question on the floor. All I right. had I had went back because when I looked at um this um this this um particular passage and i thought about how some may have been fearful um fearful afraid because of uh death because of dying dying um they've seen uh, their brother dead and uh i don't really know where i'm going with this but i i i kind of went back in our previous lesson on page 27 and on the golden text and it said death is the inescapable end for every human being on this earth and and christians and non-christians alike must face this last enemy and that is a fearful thing but this text encourages us that death will not have the last word and that fear can be conquered because Jesus has power over death for all who believe in him. I, I think that one of, the, one, of the, one of the things that allows us to do that is faith. Right, right, exactly. 
If you don't have faith, then you're going to have that fear. Mm. Or if you have a, your, a weak faith, I'll say, you're going to have that fear. But the stronger your faith, the, the more you know that Jesus is in control over death and that his promise for us is what? Resurrection. The promise for us is that he's going to be to, with us through that and, and that we will just go to sleep and wake up and be with him on the other side. And you can see this, you can see this uh, in, the, in the death of belief, when uh, believers are dying. You, I mean, you can see that they don't die the same way as unbelievers because that fear, they don't fear death. Mm. I don't know if any of y'all remember Sylvester Sims. I certainly remember Deacon Sims. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember him. Yes. When, when he went into surgery, what did he do? As they wheeled him into surgery uh, out of his room, he recited John 14, 1 through 6. <laughs> heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Be troubled. Yes. Yes, you believe in God, believe also in me. Mm -hmm. Where I go. Okay. And I had a similar experience when my uh when my father-in-law, JP Caldwell, knew that with his cancer. His days here were coming to an end. His soul was anchored. Yep. I remember JP. And, and one of his biggest concerns was that I take over his library of books and commentaries. John, that's the reason I have teachers' commentaries going back to the 60s. <laughs> I, I can imagine. <laughs> because he gave me his entire library. I'm sure that I'm sure that, that was I, I, impressive. I, I've also had the, the opportunity to experience people who did not have faith and mm -hmm. seeing that anger and that fight. My God. As, My God. As, death, as death came upon them. Ooh. Amen. Amen. Well, I didn't want to leave 41 because there's something there I think I need to point out to my students. Jesus prayed, but his prayer, and I think this is a lesson for us, his prayer wasn't a prayer petition, which might be our natural reaction. Right. His prayer first was a prayer of thanksgiving. Yeah, it was. Yes. But it seems like the, the yeah. prayer itself was not listed here. You know, yeah, the prayer was earlier. It probably was earlier, yeah. But you are correct. It, it is a. It is. This is a prayer of thanksgiving. It's a prayer, yeah. Because he's saying, you "I lift thank up you that you heard me." Yes, there you go. Yeah. See, we we would probably do one of petition or supplication first. Exactly. And once again. Going back to what we were talking about, the glory of God, these people are around him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're, they're witnessing him thanking the Father. Yes. After they took the stone away, I thank you, Father, for hearing me. That's yeah. right. That's right. And, we go, and that, that goes back to what he said in verse four. Thank you, Lord. Okay. That this sickness, sickness is not unto death. But for the glory of God, so that the Son of a God, Son of God, may be glorified by it. That's it. You nailed it. Okay, I'm done with 41. I just wanted to bring that up. Good point. And in 42, he just reemphasizes 41. Yes. Okay. I knew that you always hear me. Mm. But, but, because, but because of the crowd, because <laughs> yeah. of the multitude standing around, I said it. Okay? Not for me, not for Martha, not for Mary, not for Lazarus, but for the people that are standing around that I said it so that they would believe. That he did nothing without his father. 
That's right. And that he sent him. Okay. That yeah. you sent me. Mm -hmm. And ties back to Martha's remark. Even though it's been four days and he stinks, I know that whatever you ask God now, he'll, he'll That's give That's right. That's right. I am the resurrection. Yeah. Great lesson. Outstanding. Yeah. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And okay. I think that Lazarus come forth has been talked about uh, <laughs> a, a plethora of times that it was important that he called him by name. <laughs> and that reason being? Because if he had said, come forth, everybody, everybody that was in that tomb would have came out. There you go. Power. That's some power. That's power. Well, he's God. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That, that, that's power directed yeah. at Lazarus. Yes, Lord. And, and, yeah, and, and let's not forget uh, when he calls God his father. That would have been blasphemy. Well, it, it would have been if it was false. But again, you can see the union now between God the Father and God the Son. So all these, all these, everything that he said is, is pretty critical. The fact that he's calling and he's thanking his father, not, you know, because normally you would just say, you know, you thank God. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the Jews wouldn't even call his name. So, I mean, but now you have, now you have Jesus now saying, I thank you, father. So he's, he's directly identified himself with the father and in doing so calling himself God. Mm -hmm. And and that's one of the things that caused so much chaos among the Jews. Exactly. Because he referred to uh, God as his father. Right, right. And ain't this, ain't this uh, Joseph's son? Yeah, right. You know, it's funny. I, I, I kind of tied some of this when... Uh, uh, just under a year ago, but right around Memorial Day, uh, my wife and I and the Abbots took a Greek Isle cruise. And as we were hitting these Greek Isles, of course, uh, the churches were Greek Orthodox. And we hit churches and we hit cemeteries and tombs. And because of the lack of space, uh, they used ossuaries in the cemeteries and an ossuary is a box that simply contained the bones. So somebody would be above ground and after a year when the flesh has decayed, they would gather the bones and put them in an ossuary in the family plot. And ossuaries were one of the things they did now, the Hebrews during the times we're talking about, which is why these caves that were typically tombs would have had the ossuaries of maybe a half a dozen people. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So if, if Jesus was not specific in calling the name of the individual, all would have responded. They would have to have to because... Yeah. Because they know his voice. Yeah, he, he's the life. <laughs> you see life and, and resurrection standing before you. Right. And, and also in, in verse 25, again, this is the reason, the background. You notice he said, I am the resurrection. So again, present tense. Well, not only that, also, but I am. It's the, the word I am. Yeah. The, that's the, the name of Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, again, he's, he's, he's indicating that he's literally God. Right. And he puts emphasis on that. Right. Okay. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Right. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Thank you. Do you believe this? Yes, yes. And and I also love in, in verse 43. We have to keep in mind the crowd is still there. Yes. For something this monumental, 
and I made my own notes and I said, what if it he called Lazarus with a meek whisper? Uh, Lazarus, come on out. Is that what you know, magician do to the mutter? <laughs> right. This 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 is monumental. Exactly. Come out with a shout. A shout, right. <laughs> And, and for everyone to hear because it was a large crowd. Exactly. Exactly. For everyone to hear. You know, yeah. not, not, not sheepish, not, okay, Lazarus, come on. Wow, wow. Nobody was running around there saying, what did he say? What did yeah. he say? No, no, no. As, as a matter of fact, this, this particular saying, that this loud shout was only done one other time when he shouted like this. And that, of course, was in, yeah, that was, of course, when he was on the cross. Okay. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So you can so 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 again. This is as as Ron said. That this is a monumental uh, event that that you know, I, and that's why I was saying before is that is that we want to take our students over you know above the sur the surface because everybody know the count already, mm -hmm. and and even when even when uh, as Minister Burnett was bringing out uh, verse uh, twenty six and twenty seven. If you if you notice what what uh, the response, she said to him, "Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ." And when you see that term, "I believe," that's spoken in the continuous sense. And so what she was literally saying was, "I have always believed that you are who you say you are." Yes. Mm -hmm. And again, this comes out as we again we we have to go to other material other study tools in mm -hmm. order to really understand the grammar. So she's literally saying, you know, that that that, that I, I've always believed that you who you say are that you say you are. Right. Now, let me ask a question of the group. What does the word or the prefix mega indicate to you? That's an easy one, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, we got mega million. Mega church, mega, yeah. Mega church. Yeah. We got megaton bombs. The, re the reason I'm asking is that Sister Brains gave you an answer. What's that? Sister Big. Brains. Big, yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Huge, massive, gargantuan. Yeah. Megabytes. The reason I'm saying that is that this word where it says he chatted with a loud, cried out with a loud voice. The word translated, the Greek word translated loud is M-E-G-A-S, megas. Megas. That's where we get it from. That yeah. tells you how loud it was. Right. Megaphone. There you go. <laughs> that's right. That's what that's the prefix comes from the Greek megas, the word right here. Yeah. That says loud. Good point, by the way. Well, you know me in words. Yeah, I know. I know. In etymology, that's me. I know. I know. I'm 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 trying to reach your height there, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So 44. This is the last verse. Isn't oh wow. It? And we it's not even 8:30 yet. Wow. <laughs> the man who had died came forth. Mm -hmm. Bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go. Loose him and let him go. Okay, can I make one more point before we go to this verse? Just one more. Uh, one of the, the another reason that uh, he had to roll the stone away was so that the people could actually see inside the tomb that he was actually there. Mm. Good point. So we can go to we can go to forty four. I just I just wanted to I I admit to bringing out them and I, it slipped my mind, but uh, but that was the other reason why he uh, why he asked the servants and the um, those the, the mourners uh, to roll the stone away so that they could actually see inside the and see him come out of the the, exactly. the tomb. Yeah. Good, man. good point. Good point. Thank you. Yeah. And so his last phrase, unbind him, loose him, and let him go. Okay. okay. Remove the death clothes from off of him. So what was needed for Lazarus to hear Jesus calling him? 
You have to be awake. What was needed? Huh? You have to what be was awake. needed? Yes. What was what was required for Lazarus to hear Jesus call? call he had to be regenerated. Quicken. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, Sister Willow. There you go. It's a picture of us. Yes, you see, the, yes. Yes, most definitely. Yeah, it be regenerated. And we, we, didn't, we didn't even know we were dead. We didn't <laughs> I, 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 all right, all right, all right, Sister Willow. You ready now? And yeah, so we're that, all over this and, one. On top of that, the call it Lazarus has to come. The call cannot, could not have been rejected. This whole thing is a picture of salvation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Just like this. Just yeah, like just like this. We, we were look at dead. The state that we were in. Just dead. 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 We didn't even know. That's, didn't that's even know. Why we say, that's why we say the salvation call is a specific calling. Yes, Lord. And the call must be answered. Most definitely. It will be no answered. Doubt. It will There's be no answered. doubt about that. If if we can reject that specific call, then God ain't sovereign. And the spirit is not doesn't have the power to do that. Yeah. Well, not only that, and but God not, ain't sovereign. He not has only no, that, but exactly. Not only that, but he has more power God. than God. Exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Willa. Shout that out. Shout it loud. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I was John and I was talking earlier. Not only did the life return to the body, but the body was changed. It's no longer corrupted or deteriorating. Right. 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 And here Jesus has the mourners take one more action. Yep. Lose mm. him. Take his clothes off. Yeah. Now, in my mind, this eliminates people thinking that they may have seen a ghost. Yes, exactly. Uh, or he fainted. Uh, or oh, yeah, right. Instead of not, right. Or not only that, home. not only that, that they're touching the courts. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One other thing that we need to uh, make sure that we uh, look at as well on page thirty-six. Uh, the second paragraph from the last one up, it starts out, we have reason. What page? Page 36. Page 36. Right, right hand, left hand. Okay. Uh, right hand side. What paragraph? Okay. Paragraph, the, the second one from the last one. It starts out, we have reason. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have reason. Or it says, but but, we, but the real reason? No, we have. No, no reason. we have reason. On thirty six. Second column. So, yeah, right hand column. Second, Second to last paragraph. Second. Oh, okay, okay. Also, page forty. And page forty. We're gonna, we, we'll go to that one in a minute. But uh, we have reason to believe that cry from the cross was the victorious shout. It is finished. Yeah. John 1930. His cry of, at Lazarus' tomb also signified a victory, victory over death, and the one who had the power of the power of death, Satan, from uh Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Now uh re remember now that this is this is not a manifestation of Jesus having power over death. Yes, it had yes, it shows him that he has the ability and the power to, to resurrect, in this case, Lazarus. But remember now that, that he manifested his power over death at his resurrection. Definitely. Because Lazarus is going to most certainly die mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. So again, we need to be very careful as far as when we read. Uh -huh. we, we need to read it from a critical standpoint and put scripture against scripture. Because students are reading all that. Right. So, so, so yes, Jesus proved that he had power over death by resurrecting as by resurrecting Lazarus, as he had done in many other occasions. But it, but it wasn't a victory over death and the one who had the power of death. In other words, the victory over Satan. That did not occur. Again, this mm -hmm. is First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, tells us that. You know, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory?
questions? No, I, I agree. Well, this is the power that victory, right there. This that is the power victory right comes, yes. That victory comes from Jesus' resurrection. Mm -hmm. Right, and like I said before, uh, you want to take your students to 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, the last few verses in that pass in that chapter will uh, will help you uh, will help you uh, will help you help them understand again how we must take scripture to interpret to interpret scripture again the statement is not totally false but that latter part the timing is the timing is mm -hmm. is kind of off. And on your practical points on page 40, practical point uh, number four. Again, page 40, uh, number four, publicly thanking God for, an, for answered prayers and blessings can help others believe. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> possibly, but believe what? That's the question. Right. Remember, people believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Your testimony, it, it might be powerful, but if they don't hear the gospel, there is no there is no salvation apart from the gospel. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, these are just two things that, uh, as me and Faye were discussing the lesson, those are two things that kind of like uh, popped out. Uh, and again, this does not say that the that the that the book is not a good book. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, we must always remember that we that we're reading other people's theology. Okay. When I was writing for the National Baptist Convention, all the commentaries that I, that I wrote for them, all the lessons that I wrote for them, that was based on my understanding of theology. So that's why, you, and that's and I know you're probably tired of hearing me say this, but that's why you need these additional tools. Tools that would that would take you back to the original language, would take you back to the culture. And trust me, this this is gonna make you a better teacher by doing that extra uh that extra uh, uh that extra mile, so to speak. And I'm, I'm